Welcome to the show. This is the Below the Yellow Line podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Below the Yellow Line podcast, the podcast where me and my co-host, Emily, talk the NASCAR Cup Series four hours a week, three days a week, and hope somebody will listen. I am uh, one of your co-hosts, Samuel Stubb. Emily can't be with us tonight, but I do want to welcome you to the post-race show the same day post-race show for the 2023 Worth 400 Episode number 34 of the Below the Outline podcast. Um, and if you're saying, wait, but number 32 was the pre-race show. What do you mean? I put out an episode, like, joint YouTube video last night concerning the rain delay. Um, but we did have a pretty good Dover race today. I thought it was really good. And Martin Truex breaks his winless streak. Before we get into results or point standings... Um, I do kind of just want to break down the story of the race. And I'm a little more rusty than I was on the YouTube pre-race show because it's been longer. I did that like right after the race. And uh, we do have a YouTube channel that, you know, we post this on. And it goes along with it. It's the Spotter Stand, the Spotter Postria Stand. Um, You can find us there. You can find this podcast there. Um, You know, make sure to to go subscribe to that channel. You can also email us um, regarding both the channel and the podcast, below the online podcast, gmail.com. And of course, you can find this podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or anywhere that you get your podcast. Martin Truex Jr. gets his 32nd career win. The 2017 champ, finally, and I mean finally, wins another race. I mean, I I honestly was maybe doubting if he would ever do it again. It seemed like everything went wrong for him. And I mean everything. In terms, uh, like, since September 11, 2021, he just, he hasn't, he hasn't had good luck, or he's made a mistake. Pit crew's made a mistake. Something has gone wrong. Um... Uh, take, I mean, look at Homestead last fall. Spins on pit road. Um, look at... Uh, I'm trying to think here. Look at Talladega last week. This just wasn't good enough. I mean, it's just been heartbreak after heartbreak, both in race wins last year, fourth in the regular season standings, and missed the playoffs. A huge win for Truex. It's like a rebound win, almost, for him. Um, and I am very happy for him. I couldn't be happier for the guy. Um, so, anyway, race recap here. Kyle Busch starts on pole, um, has a pit road speeding penalty, sends him to the back. Um, and then William Byron looked to be the guy that was in control. Looked like it was him and Hamlin. So he, Byron goes off and wins stage one. But Hamlin starts to fade, and then all of a sudden Ross Chastain comes into the picture. And then... Chastain gets around Byron on the first round of green flag pit stops, of which we had two rounds today. When's the last time we had that at Dover? Probably pretty recently, actually, but I just I don't remember it anyway. Uh, pit Road at Dover, pretty treacherous. The only instant we had was Harrison Burton spinning, like, right in front of Byron late in the race when he had fallen to, like, 6th or 7th. Um, no caution, Burton got it turned around. But um, the really interesting thing to me in this race was there was a lot of comers and goers, which to me signifies a good race, unless it's just due to a lot of cautions or strategy. It was because of passing. I mean, guys, cars came in and, and went at different times, and that's that's how you know, you know, it's a good race. You know, different grooves were being used. The weather was impacting the track, which I love to see. It brings a whole different variable, a whole new challenge. It's funny to me that these guys are pros, have been doing it for 20, 30 years, and yet a cloud or a little ray of sunshine can literally derail or make your whole day. Um, so Chastain takes over after the green flag pit stops. His pit crew, along with being very funny today, um, also got him out a second before William Byron. Um, and I'll, I completely forgot to mention, lap 81. Speaking of Ross Chastain, he chastained Brennan Poole and chastained Kyle Larson. Poole's holding them up. He's a lap car. Chastain and Larson are battling for fifth. So Chastain hits Yaley. Lap 80 of 400, mind you. We are like a fifth of the way through this race. Hits Yaley. Yaley gets, you know, goes up to the top where Larson is and wrecks him. Or sorry, Poole. You know, nothing Poole or Larson really could do. Just got Chastain. Chastain stood over the radio. Oh my gosh, I didn't mean to do it. And then in the post race, uh, his post race interview is very apologetic, but. We're not going to see him change because he's been saying that since Gateway last summer. And guess what? He has not changed. Um, Yeah. So anyway, you know, we we have or Chastain wins stage two. 
And then William Byron all of a sudden just started to fade. He got really loose. You see Blaney start to get up there. And then Martin Truex puts his hat in the ring. And Martin Truex looks like he has a shot late. And obviously he ended up in victory lane. Obviously he did have a shot late. Um, so then it all of a sudden becomes Truex versus Chastain. And on the last round of green flag pit stops, Martin Truex has a great stop, takes the lead. This was after a bit of banter between him and James Small. The previous round of green flag stops, they waited too late to come in. On this round, they were the first car in, I believe. And that's what got him out in front of Ross Chastain. So he had the lead. It's pretty smooth sailing until late in this race. Even though Chastain had gotten there, Truex had fended him off. But lap traffic starts to play a hand in it. Chastain gets there, and then he fades away. The biggest part in that lap traffic, though, was Kyle Larson, who obviously not happy with Ross Chastain. He's shown he can get angry, but he doesn't usually take his tempers out by wrecking a car. And so Larson does the very mature thing. He holds up Chastain. Mind you, he does not wreck him or hold him up to the level of Denny Hamlin at Gateway last summer. But he holds him up enough for, Ch for Truex to get like a 1.4 second lead, which he immediately gives back because of more lap traffic. And then, with 15 laps to go, Joey Logano, who had a horrendous day, started 26th, had cording issues in practice, cording issues on the right front tire in the race, made like 10 pit stops, was running 28th before he spins, wrecks hard, catches on fire. Thankfully, he was okay, but I believe he ended up in 31st. His just terrible day was over, and that sets up a late restart because it wouldn't be a NASCAR Cup race without a gimmicky late restart. Am I right? That sets up strategy. So there's only eight cars in the lead lap. Ross Chastain says, all right, I'm not going to lose much track position because the gap in between is entering pit road. If I take four tires, I want four tires. So Ross Chastain gets four tires. Martin Truex takes two, as does Ryan Blaney. So it's Blaney and Truex on the front row. Blaney races Truex really hard. Pretty clean. Might have had a little contact. Raced him really hard. But you're going for the win in a cup race. I mean, that's just how it is nowadays. But Blaney just doesn't have enough. Truex was just better. Chastain gets around Blaney. He didn't get around him quick enough, in my opinion, to really have a shot. He tries the top, doesn't work, just loses time, tries the bottom, gains a little bit back, but not much. And the four tires just on that short run, they weren't enough. The, the four tires, they just they didn't have much of an impact. I mean, they, they really didn't. Uh, they, they didn't do much of anything. Um, it's, maybe on a longer run, they would have. Um, but, you know, we saw early in the race, Kyle Busch stayed out early, tried to gain back some track position within two laps of no tires versus fresh tires. Uh, he was back to like 20th. Um, but that's no tire. I mean, two tires, whole different story, especially that late. And Truex was just, he was he was the dominant car at the end of that race. Um, Ross Chastain, really close, though, ends up uh, a little over half a tenth back. Ryan Blaney, 1.3 seconds back. Um, we're really good race, in my opinion. Really good racing. Uh, let's take a look at the results now. No Alex Bowman today, so that kind of hurt me. But my favorite driver for, I guess, like the next three or four weeks, like number one, is Bubba Wallace ends up a decent 12. Started 28, so I'm happy with it. But Byron won stage one, Chastain won stage two, and Martin Truex gets the win. Locks himself into the playoffs, by the way. He'll be happy about that after the way last regular season ended. Chastain in second, I mean, hey, he might be making people mad, but he can race with the best of them. He, he can race with the guys he makes mad. Ryan Blaney in third, I believe he now, of like all the competitive guys, has the longest win streak in the, or uh, win less streak in the NASCAR Cup Series. I believe it's 57 races. I believe it's three races longer than, than Truex's was. So his last win was Daytona in 2021 in August. Um, William Byron in fourth, led 190 laps dominated class of the field and i'm not gonna rag on byron too much he ran a really good race today he's a really good young driver but i think he will start to do this in in the next two three years these are the races that you want to close out these are the races you want to either finish second or third or win and fourth is a great day fourth is a great day but like in the championship race the round of eight the round of 12 even these are the races that if you want to advance and win the championship these are the races you have to either win or finish that second and third uh, still a really good day for him, though. Just continues to, to probably be one of the championship favorites. Denny Hamlin in fifth, another solid day. Christopher Bell in sixth, Tyler Reddick in seventh. RFK, fantastic day, although it wasn't always looking like that. Kislowski had a pit road penalty, fell back to like 23rd at worst, was going to lap down in 16th and claws his way back up to eighth. That six was flying today. Chris Buescher in ninth, another great day for him. And then you have Josh Berry in the 48, rounding out the top 10. I thought he could be a dark horse to win. Some things went his way. Not all things went his way that needed to for him to win. 
But 10th is really solid, and he's showing, even at 32, that yes, he is a very, very highly touted cut prospect. Flynn in for a moment in the next three, four weeks. I think he has a shot to win North Wilkesboro if he's able to get in that 48 for the All Star race. Chase Selly, another solid week in 11th. Gained some more points on the cut line. Finishes of what? Uh, 10th, 12th, and 11th now. So that would be a 11th place average. Not bad at all. I mean, one is stage, one stage one at Dega last week, second in stage two at Talladega. So he is, I don't want to say he just hasn't missed a beat, but he's really good. Next two, three weeks, I think we'll start to see him in contention for the win. Uh, more, But it does take time to get back in like that winning form. We saw that with Kyle Busch. Took him a few races, and then he went on tear. And I don't know if Chase Elliott's going to go on a 2015 level Kyle Busch tear, but we'll see. Bubba in 12th, solid day for him. Ty Gibbs, man, he was kind of the story of this race late. He was seven laps short on fuel when they pitted it with 73 to go. Well inside the fuel window at Dover, they just didn't get it full. I, I guess had an issue with the fuel can transfer. Ends up 13th, probably deserved a top five. He ran a great race, and he's probably got rookie of the year locked up at this point, unless Noah Gregson goes crazy. Gregson had his fifth race in a row, finishing 30th or worse. And I know he's not in the best equipment. Gibbs obviously in a top-tier ride. But, man, I mean, it's not like Legacy Motor Club was a slouch last year. They won the Southern 500 last year. I mean, they, they, they it's decent equipment. And Ty Gibbs is kicking Gregson's butt like he did in Xfinity last year in the championship. Corey LaJoy, another great run for him. 14th, Stenhouse in 15th. Continues just to run really solid this year. Eric Jones, 16th. Priest in 17th. Almondinger. 18th, Harvick in 19th, I don't know what happened, I think he had tire recording issues like Logano, I saw Bubba had that late in this race too, might have been the final round of green flag stop that Bubba had that, but Harvick uh, was running in the top 5, top 10 all day, had the issues late, got caught a lap down and finished his 19th, but he had a really solid day as well, Harrison Burton in 20th, Kyle Busch, penalty early, damage early in a wreck, I believe it was the one that took out Dylan and McLeod, and maybe Suarez, or maybe it was the Suarez one, I don't know, but um, Kyle Busch with uh, just a, a bad day. Michael McDowell, 22nd. Haley in 23rd. Almarola, 24th. Todd Gillen, 25th. This kind of stops his great run, but going to Kansas, going to Darlington, a, a place where uh, Todd Gillen, I believe, was pretty solid last year's rookie at Darlington, so we'll see if he can recapture that magic. Uh, you have Austin Sindrick in 26th. Uh, Two-thirds of Penske. It just wasn't good today. I said I, I thought I might expect it from Logano because Logano, even though he won the championship last year, only had top 10s in a little over half the races, 19 top 10s, 36 races. Um, when Joey Logano is on, he's on. And then there are races like today where he's just terrible all day. And Austin Cindric's had a few of those weeks in a row. So Cindric wants to be taken seriously. Can't have these stretches. Austin Dillon, 27th. Yuck. J.J. Yaley, 28th, McLeod, 29th, Briscoe, 30th. He bent the toe link, so that stopped his a really good run at three top fives in a row. Logano, 31st, Larson, 32nd. Just kind of had to run out the day at that point. But in pool, I had some spicy words for Ross Chastain. He ended up 33rd. Noah Gregson, 34th on the DVP clock. Suarez involved in a wreck as well, 35th. Yikes. Um, and then Ty Dillon finishes up last in 36th. As far as the standings goes, I was a little wrong. I In my YouTube post-race show, I was going off ESPN, and that, that's kind of the way they do their standings is weird. They do it a lot faster than NASCAR.com, but the way they do it's weird. Um, so it's actually Ross Chastain, not Christopher Bell, leading the NASCAR Cup Series points. Chastain has a three-point lead for the regular season title over Bell, but also how NASCAR.com is doing it. They're, they're taking Bowman out of the playoff picture right now which I don't think we should do because we know he's going to get a waiver anyway. I don't I don't see much of a point. He is, let's see here, I believe, okay, so Bowman is 40, is 39 above the cut line. Basically, Suarez, it says Suarez is in right now. He's not. It says he's plus three. He's, no, basically not. Um, but Truex does lock in, so Bell, Truex, Reddick, Kyle Busch, Larson, Byron, Logano, Stenhouse are eight winners. Eight winners in 11 races, Busch, Larson, Byron, the three drivers to win at two races this year. So I'm just going to go off what these say. I know it's going to change when Bowman comes back, and maybe Truex will change the cut line a little bit, but I'm just going to say this because uh, they're official. Um, Chastain is plus 142, so he's currently the highest guy in on points. Uh, Harvick is plus 104, Blaney is plus 98, Hamlin is plus 89, Kozlowski is plus 75, and again, take these with a grain of salt, because they, they will change when Bowman's granted his waiver, um, 
or I, I, I don't know. I guess he's going to be out anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. But anyway, you know, Busher plus 49, uh, Briscoe plus 22, Suarez currently the last man in plus 3, Gibbs currently the first guy out minus 3, Cindric minus 7, McDowell minus 14, Bubba minus 15, LaJoy minus 23, Gilland minus 30, Jones minus 45. So this really does bunch the field up a lot more, and we'll see where Bowman slots in here. Um... But I will be interested to see what, what you know, when he comes back, what it does, you know, to, to the points. Um, uh, where was I? Jones minus 45, Amarola minus 50, Justin Haley minus 54, Almendinger minus 60, Priest minus 62, Elliott minus 83. So it's looking doable that he can point his way in. I still think he wins, though. Uh, Burton minus 93, Dylan minus 98, Gregson minus 120, Ty Dylan minus 149. So I believe we had like three or four guys at least 100 points out. Now we only have two. Um, so it does bunch the field up a lot more. It makes it more exciting. I know we're still, you know, we're not even halfway through the regular season yet. Still got over half of it left, 15 races. Um, but but that is something interesting to, to look at, see how Bowman's absence is impacting um, the standings right now. I believe that's about all we have, guys. So looking forward to Kansas this week. We will have our Wednesday combo episode up uh, upon Wednesday. We'll recap Dover. Preview Kansas, talk about the news. Hopefully Emily can be on for that show, and then we'll have our normal Friday preview show where we will preview the, I believe it's the Advent Health 400 again this year um, at Kansas Speedway. That is at 3 Eastern, Sunday, May 7th. FS1, MRN, Series XM, NASCAR Radio. So going to be a fun one. Is a Bubba fan? Could be an opportunity for him to get a win. I'm looking at 23-11, looking at Larson, looking at Kyle Busch maybe to be the contenders in that one. We will see you on Wednesday again. Go to the Spotter Stand at YouTube channel. For more NASCAR coverage of all three national series, I am Sam with Subs from the Spotter Stand YouTube page. And below the LM podcast, thank you for listening. I'll catch you later.